What's up guys, welcome back to VMTV Vault. My guest for this episode is the last Viking, Mr. Thomas Narmo. If you aren't familiar with Thomas, he competes in one championships heavyweight division. He's got a fight coming up on the 11th of February at One Bad Blood against Odie Delaney, who's an American wrestler. Um, so we started talking to Thomas all about the one heavyweight division and the landscape of it, because it is a bit strange at the moment. But of course, talking about other things, talking about one championship compared to other promotions, he has fought once before on one championship, so his experiences with the promotion um, in that previous fight. Talked a little bit about a certain Hamzat Chimaev, who he has sparred with in the past. Um, loads of good stuff. So without further ado, Mr. Thomas Narmo. Uh, so obviously we'll start with your fight up, coming up on one championship at One Bad Blood. Um, you... I fought in one championship before and that was one of the things we were talking to you a lot about beforehand was your experience with one so tell me what that experience was like fighting for them for the first time uh, to fight for one championship was it was really great uh like uh, everyone involved with the company like everyone working with travels uh, competition team uh everyone was who was on set so to say with the hotel uh prior to the fighting everything it was just uh service was perfect you know they were so so nice and kind people everyone was trying to help as best as they could uh got a really good impression of uh of the whole organization uh so i'm looking forward to to be able to compete there again you know it's obviously a really huge uh huge show with a lot of uh spectators and people watching around the world so it's uh, it's a good place to be i know that obviously you fought there and then you've had you've had one fight in between being on one right was was the deal was was the plan always to come back to one after that fight yeah it was uh just trying to stay active you know it's a pandemic and everything so it's it's not easy you just uh especially for me you know i haven't i haven't trained uh, a lot or fought like I started training martial arts in 2018 or 2017, you know, so I haven't like, I'm still pretty like most people train for four years. They haven't stepped in the cage yet, you know? So for me, mm -hmm. it's just important to get uh, as much time as possible to, to compete. Yeah, absolutely. Where are you, where are you training out of right now? Uh, so it's a uh, kind of uh, mixing. It's at Novus Academy where I first started out, and at uh, Kimura Gym uh, in Hama, which is uh, about an hour away from where I live. So I'm like switching between the, those two at the moment. Hmm. How hard has it been to to stay active through the pandemic? I don't know what the situation's like with 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 shows that are closer to you than, than maybe the UK. But has, has that been has that been a real struggle to find shows that will of be, being able to put on events oh yeah it's been terrible and to be able to train as well because the government there they shut down the gyms and everything in, right, in yeah. 2020 it wasn't even open though it was like a couple of months only open you know so it's been back and forth all the time you have to find ways to train and because mma is illegal in norway it's not considered a sport you know so right, okay uh, within like, like when they say professional sports are like back to normal didn't really matter for us you know because we're right. we're not uh, recognized as a sport so it was right. uh, kind of rough but uh, you always find a way to to train you know it's it's probably not the best solution but you have to do what you have to do yeah uh, talking about one championship, the heavyweight division at the moment is in a bit of a strange period. That's something else that we were talking to you about beforehand. I just wanted to get your take on it and how how those things are kind of playing out, what you kind of see, where you see the division going at the moment. Uh, I, from, like, if, if I got the story right, I think it's that the reigning champ, Bullard, he is asking for more money to fight, but he's under contracts. I mean, like, uh, uh, it's hard to negotiate on something that's already written on paper. It's like, you agreed to this in the first place, you know? So I um, think that's, um, but, you know, that's, uh, say it's, it's his career. And if he just wants to sit out and wait, then cool. It's it like, uh, it's only him that can control that. Uh, but 
uh, what I think is good about that is that they're not like putting the division hold uh, on hold just because he doesn't want to fight, you know. Uh, so they just. Uh, well, it's interesting. You see, they've signed a lot of, of fighters now, both in the heavyweight and light heavyweight division. Um, so, uh, but uh, what is really clear to me is that uh, uh, Buchecha is coming up as a number one contender. I think uh, in one championship, he's Buchecha, so <laughs> like he is good. You know, you know what's coming with him, and uh, so far, nobody has been able to stop it. You know, it's, uh, but. Uh, uh, I think that he's probably one or two fights away from fighting for the title. Uh, so he will probably be up next uh, as the next, next challenger after. Or let's see what happens uh, next week with, uh, with the current title fight, though. Uh, could be some controversy. Could be like you never know what happens. So, But uh, um, if there's a clear winner there, uh, no back and forth bullshit, I think that Buchecha is probably the next guy to go for the title, unless they're trying to build uh, like a really huge fight for uh, the interim champ versus the champ, something like that. But uh, I don't know how how the negotiations are going with uh, with the contract and stuff. So so let's see. But uh, I think that uh, the division is not too deep in in the heavyweight uh, class. So uh, like. If you can rack up like three, four wins, you're your title contender all of a sudden, you know. Uh, so interesting time. It's like, uh, but on the other hand, you know, there's not a lot of of heavyweights fighting in general, you know. So that's also why the, the division kind of lacks the, um, uh, what do you say, like, uh, uh, don't know like what word to use in English, but it's like there's no by the depth. The, the roster is yeah, the roster is not too deep, you know. So it's uh, um, but yeah, I think uh, I think there's a fair chance for anyone that uh, like if you want to fight, I think you can get to fight. You know, like just say hey, I'm good to go, and I think they'll put you in as long as you come to fight and you come to perform. Yeah, it seems like a, a, a strange time because of what's going on with Bueller, but also a, a great time for if you're coming up in the division because there is uncertainty there. And you, you can definitely, like you said, with a couple of wins because of the division, there isn't a ton of guys in the division. A couple of wins and you can mm. you can really make a solid case for why you should be given that spot instead. Um, obviously, you've got a fight with Odie Delaney coming up. So... That's got to be mm -hmm. the main the main goal here is to to get that win and then that a win alone here, especially with a card like this big card, that's going to put you right on the map in this division like instantly. I would imagine. Yeah, I guess like uh, he doesn't have too much experience in MMA, but you know his his wrestling credentials are like they're on point. So I mean he he is legit. He's been doing this all mm -hmm. his life, and this is a good test, you know, because. What you see with the guys in the division, you've got, uh, obviously, you have Buchecha. Like, if he, if he can get you down, you're screwed. Like, mm. there, there's no way around it. If he gets you to the ground, you're in deep trouble. Uh, and But I don't think that, like, a guy like this, like Odi Delaney, he's probably a better wrestler, you know? So, I mean, like, if he can't take you down, how can a guy like Buchecha, for example, how can he get you down? So, I think it's, like, a good... Uh, like good test to prepare for bigger things and he also got this guy fighting for the interim title uh, Kirill Grushenko the, the guy from Belarus mm -hmm. he's also quite a decent wrestler you see like especially with his like wrestling defense I saw that against the, when he fought uh, for the African guy so all the time like stopping him uh, nobody was able to like Take him down. So I think, like, he, I think he has pretty solid wrestling as well. So I think if you're able to keep the fight standing, like, especially with with a guy like Odi, uh, think uh, think uh, I got a good chance of coming out with a with a big victory here. Absolutely. I mean, the the thing that we that we were talking to you about before doing this interview that uh, I thought was 
absolutely incredible. Uh, I mean, it relates very well to what you were just saying about if this guy gets you down, it's over. You're talking about the sparring when you when you had come across Hamzat Shemaya. When when was that? Uh, first time was in uh, was in Oslo uh, when he was here visiting, and I've also been to All Stars training. So I mean, seeing that guy over there, he's a killer. You know, <laughs> it's. Uh, I got like no doubt in my mind that he will be the UFC champion. You know, he he's he, he's just on on another level. How long ago? How long ago was it that you that you met him for the first time? Uh, two years, maybe. It was, was he... before he was in the UFC. It was before yeah. he was in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. He well, fought I... one of my teammates, and then right. he came over to train after. Right. Okay. Was he like that? Was so... he was he the same then? Yeah. But now he's like his skill level is like he's progressing, you know. But he was like mm. mentally, he was the same guy, you know. He was the champ already back then. Yeah, yeah. One of the think... things you said that 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 really really made me laugh was that you would you would rather fight Ngannou or Derek Lewis right now than fight that guy. I mean, that says yeah, it. But, yeah. I think they got a human side to them, you know. But that guy, I don't think he has a human side, especially when he steps in that cage, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I remember after his debut in the UFC, there was there was suddenly all these stories coming out about him in training, and just like it's literally what you've said about how that that no one wants to be on the mat with this guy. He's just another level. So I mean, to to see that firsthand, especially years before he was even in the UFC, do you just instantly was it like an instant thing? Like as soon as as soon as you saw him step on that mat, that he's just a different person. Or is he like that all the time? Because I can't imagine him being any different. Uh, he's a he's a super nice guy. Really? To be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just like it's I think it's a switch, you know. Switch, like yeah. when he puts the gloves on, especially gum shielding gloves on, it's uh uh you know, he, he's there to to get better every day. Mm. So and he and uh, he, he is good. I think he will be the champ for sure. Yeah. One thing so I wanted to, to bring back up that you mentioned earlier, because I wasn't I wasn't aware of this about MMA being illegal in Norway. Is there mm -hmm. is there it because in the UK we've got the recently set up uh English Mixed Martial Arts Association that's that's trying to get the sport to be recognized officially mm -hmm. and try and make a campaign for, for getting it in the Olympics and stuff. Is there something like that going on in Norway or is it still very still quite a small thing? Oh, we had the Norwegian MMA Federation for years. We've been right. like, I think the first time it was in the IMF competition was in 2013 mm -hmm. or 2014. Right. But that doesn't really matter. <laughs> right. The government, okay. what they, they don't like it. It's like, it, it's more of like, because there's like no logical reasons why, because bo like professional boxing is legal, jiu jitsu is legal, wrestling is legal. But if you put it together, it's illegal. Right, that is that very That would be strange. like, uh, like in the UK, you probably don't care too much about it. But say, for example, you know what bi biathlon is, where you, where yeah. you go skiing and then you shoot, right? Yeah. Be like, okay, you can go ski and you can shoot, but if you mix it together, no, no, you can't really do that. You know, it's like it make it would be like kind of the same. Makes no sense. Yeah, it, yeah, that is so baffling. <laughs> it does it does it feel like? Because that, that part of the world has had, like MMA has grown everywhere, of course, in recent years. But obviously, you know, so, some great fighters coming out of that part of the world, especially, I feel like is, is raising the profile for sure. Like you mentioned the All Stars gym in Sweden, like just so many great fighters out of there. Mm -hmm. Do you do you feel like it will get to a point where they can't ignore it? I know obviously France got to a point where they, they couldn't ignore it anymore and they, they had to be like, oh, this is kind of silly. But it, like you said, if you put it together, you're not allowed to do it. But yeah, I think uh, at some point, you know, it will it will it will be legalized. It's like just because you don't like something doesn't mean like there's nobody forcing you to watch it, hmm. you know. But with the popularity growing, and you get like uh, more fighters getting out on the big stage, like now we got Her Hermansen. Obviously, he's like dual citizenship with Sweden. Yeah. And you have uh, Martin Hamlet in the PF.